The narrative or story of the Nelmapius Bridge and various other bridge, bridges, uh, bridges we were involved and we at the moment busy with um, as an exploration of, of bridge design. So let me start with the Nelmapius Bridge. Um, I always wondered what's the difference between a story and a narrative. And um, then I found out that a narrative is the way how you tell a story, whereas a story is what you tell. This is the first concept sketch. Um, you can see on the left hand side, it's a very intuitive sketch. And I thought I would throw away that piece of bump, but I kept the piece of bump as the generator of this whole project. Um, that piece of bump, um, or that quick sketch, became actually uh, the centerpiece of the exhibition at the Venice Biennale last year. Again, the concept, the concept of origami that I've used, and as, uh, the concept was derived from uh, a book that one of my younger sons bought on the, uh, the, on the art form of origami. And there I realized that there's a lot of potential in these shapes. And uh, on, the, uh, on the bottom right, you can see the, all the forms or the explore, exploration model. Um, the, you know, there's a lot of uh, precedent studies uh, all around in furniture and vase design uh, regarding fractal geometry. And there's the model, the first model that we presented to our client, Sunroll. The lighting design investigation. Um, lighting is very, very important. And for this, um, as you can see, um, that we try to, I mean, there's a lot of ways to, to light this project. but. Um, what we did is the first concept or the first lighting company came up with this solution. They said that the whole, all the facades must be lit. And the idea was on each apex to design uh, a detail, as you can see there in the middle and the bottom, to design a detail that would flood the entire panel, um, that would lit the entire bridge. And we were not very, very happy with that because I said the, the bridge must only be lit from the bottom so that each, so that you can see the forms and you can see the analogy of the heartbeat of the province of Gauteng. Here we just have early renderings of the, and just some of the technical sketches. Uh, technical investigation was actually very, very difficult because all the practical problems having you know, building a facade on, of a bridge facade on the highway and doing it with steel. Um, it was actually, actually extremely uh, difficult. You can see just some of the technical details that we worked out, the fixings, but I'm not going into the fixings in detail. And here you can see uh, in the factory, you can look at the scale of the project. Each panel, uh, the bridge consists, consists of five panels, prototypes and two uh, and two angles and we used or organized them in a random fashion. Here we started to test the panels. Um, you can see warm white and in the end we decided to go for uh, like a very bright white. Um, uh, we tried to play with color on the on the left hand side you can see there we started to look at blue for the lighting mass but then we found out that the Gauteng, the toll the toll people are also going to use blue lights and we said no let's stay clear from from blue let's keep it simple because we don't want to be confused with the new toll gates and we were not the architects for those toll gates the e-toll system there's the final product and you can see the idea of the paper uh, the concept of the paper the shadows and how the bridge uh, in daytime you know catches the sun and the panels how it deflects the light and all the forms appear from very close you can see the detailing and um, just another detailed photo of the final product and then there's a night shot because a bridge always there's you've got people going over a bridge and people under a bridge in the if you go over a bridge you're a participant and if you see a bridge in the distance it's more of a gateway and a landmark and so there's two different modes of designing a bridge and here's the night shot of the, or a detailed shot of those panels. This is the final solution. You can, I th hope you can agree with me that the aesthetics of just lighting it from the bottom works much better because it enhances the form of each panel.
And then we got this uh, telephone call from uh, the curators of the Traces of Centuries and Future Steps, the Global World's Art Foundation. And they, they said uh, we should actually, they asked us to exhibit the bridge um, in uh, Venice for the 2012 Venice Biennale at the Palazzo Bembu near the Rialto Bridge. And we said, sure, we, the bridge is not complete because they only saw sketches and designs. Uh, so we couldn't take photos, um, but we really wanted to be in Venice. So I said, we must make a plan. I just said, yes, we will be there. Um, we contacted Sanral. We asked permission if we could go to Venice and if they would sponsor, because obviously shipping and all of that is not, it's not, um, it's a bit pricey. And obviously they will get the world stage exposure as well. And then um, the only, uh, I had the idea of, well, it must be light. Um, and then we got a quote to produce this whole installation in, in Venice or in Milan very close because then there's no shipment. And what could a piece of canvas and a structure and a light cost? And then we got the price in euros. And we said, no, there's no ways uh, Sanral would pay for that. There's no ways that we can afford it. Let's go for Boermarker Plan. So what we did, I said, well, let's exhibit the, the freehand sketch. And luckily, I didn't, didn't chuck that piece of bump away. The initial sketch or the concept sketch, you know, I took that concept sketch and we printed it on fabric, on a fabric that could be that's weather resistant. And we went to our nearest, closest um, hardware store and we bought all these equipment. So the whole structure and frame and cables and cable ties and instructions were put together from a local hardware store. So uh, and we, that was really a boom made a plan. And we flat packed it and shipped it and all within budget and time with good instructions and that there you can see the end product in the, at the exhibition. This is a bridge. Um, obviously, we're busy. This is not. To, uh, it's still in the experimental phase. It's not to say that they are going to do it. I don't know even know if I am allowed to show it to you, but I think it's good to show you that um, different disciplines can come together. So we haven't got the green light for that. So on our own, um, you know, you know, we said we will help them to investigate what can be done. And there's a new bypass in Messina, and so when you enter from um, when you enter from Zimbabwe, so it's a gateway to South Africa. And um, also, these this new bridge. The idea was um, this first concept sketch is to show a hand, and because you only need one center column. And then we started with uh, looking at. You can see. Uh, from polystyrene and 3D printing to, to investigate if we can do a, a hand. And I think that could be very, very effective as a landmark and sculpture. So we brought in a sculptor, Angus Taylor, and he's going to help us to do this piece of uh, sculpture um, when entering. That's very realistic, so obviously we want to do it a bit more abstract and uh, a bit more simple. But to show you what um, could be done. This is another investigation, but because of the flow of forces and obviously the engineers will understand, this was a, an idea because they said if you enter a country, like um, if you come from Mexico to America or whatever, you see these big, huge uh, national flags. And, um, and we thought so the brief was to investigate uh, the flag. And we just said the only way we can do it because you can't put a flag upside down. Uh, the only way you can do, do it is by putting the Y up. And so that's some of the first sketches and this is the second option for the hand bridge. But because of the flow of forces and the tension on those cables and it doesn't look uh, honest, we decided to, um, there you can see one of the model, we decided not to proceed with this concept. But we also had a Belsa uh, model built. Uh, just And what I do, I take my cell phone uh, and like a car pull the cell phone at the bottom so that you can perceive the bridge and that's how we should design actually with models I design a lot with models 
I'm not a fan of the computer. I do a lot of freehand stuff and models. And this is the Orta bridge on the R21. This was a competition, uh, invited competition, where uh, Sandral invited uh, three architects that with uh, bridge experience. And uh, because in South Africa, there's not a lot of them. Uh, that it, uh, because it, it's not as simple as it looks. Um, and this is our, uh, this is our entry. Um, but I'm quickly going to skip all the site analysis and what we learned from this is the concept of desired line um, because they said you can see the two bridges um, on this aerial photo and then you can see the natural desired line. We went there with our research with a video camera and I said we must just film patterns and I think architects must do that even engineers must do that uh, more often to look at behavior behavioral patterns and while we I was standing there there was one lady and she got out she crossed that R21 on a very busy time with heels that high <laughs> with a pencil skirt and heels that high and I just asked them do you have on camera <laughs> And she thought, well, what's this about? And I, we, I said, but why? I mean, over this R21, you're running with heels that high. Do you, don't you think it's um, a bit dangerous? And she said, well, it's the shortest way to go over those bridges. And that's the desired lines. So, um, structures and a sculpture in the environment. This is very, very important. Um, and our bridge design philosophy, I've spoken about uh, the visual joy. I think if you're a commuter and you're depressed or you're in traffic and every now and then you get a sense of a, a nice uh, visual landmark or something that brightens up your day, I think that's just as important. Uh, landmark, gateway, safety, obviously user-friendly legacy and all those things. The problem with a lot of bridges, foot bridges especially, is people are lazy. So if they see there's a very steep steps they would avoid it. So the whole thing is to use a series of ramps to lure them onto the same uh, level. And then we're very uh, uh, passionate about loc our local aesthetic. Um, so I'll just go through our three entries. Um, the one, because it's at the airport, the client expected something to do with the airplane, so we've just said, okay, let's just do the literal analogy. Um, then the mine shaft because it's Joburg and you could see the whole uh, um, Joburg skyline. Uh, then uh, and the bridge type was a cable stay and beam bridge, so it's a combination from two sides. And this is the build-up of that bridge. So I'll quickly go through almost videomatic so that you can see the build-up, the ramps, and the urban design at the edges. That's the cable stay part. And there we, and that's the final. Uh, so you can see the cutout at the, on the tower. The cutout on the tower resembles the mine shafts. Uh, the cables are lit, so it's direct spotlights on the cables. So at night you will only see the cables, and then it will just disappear in darkness. And then on the other side, we'll just uh, light this, um, you know, the body of the airplane or whatever. And there you can see wash light against concrete surface to enhance the silhouette. Uh, walkway lighting from cable spots, landmark light, and wash light against vertical steel surface to, s to simulate movement. And I think that's very, very important uh, uh, lighting as a design tool. The second concept we enter was the, uh, the wire art or the handmade president study. Handmadeness is very, very important because all our crafters, they make stuff with their hands. And that's so South African. And what we said, we will try and uh, uh, emulate the beading, uh, the handmade art, the galvanized wire. We'll try and, try and you know, give something about the local aesthetic. And there's the concept development. Um, it's a suspension bridge. And this is the build-up. Uh, the whole idea, uh, you'll see also the randomness. Um, it's cables, but uh, the problem with a cable, you never see a cable. So what we thought w was that we would use um, 
steel pipes or galvanized steel pipes to just make it look like wire, real blow draught or wire um, that you see next to, you know, if at the traffic light or where you see the craft is to get that handmaidenness of the bridge. There you can see all the, the randomness of the wire, almost like basket weaving. Those would have been big beads uh, in the colors of the national flag the urban design framework and there is the bridge at day and night and there you can see it's the beads as light source so the the beads would have been the lights and the random light effect with the floating beads because all these beads would be floating and the walkway would be illuminated from the lower beads and then you get the star effect with the cables for only two meters, then uh, the light source would disappear. And then the third concept, we said this is um, because if you're an architect, you should look at the site and see what story the site tells. And with this concept, we saw that um, we saw that there's two bridges, and we asked them why was there two bridges? Exactly the same. It's two pedestrian bridges. They're still there um, at the Ortia. And that's a, that's a remnant of apartheid. The one was for white people and the one was for black people. And we said, but it, I mean, obviously, you know, with this new bridge, we said, blow them all down, take the rubble and use the rubble to create a new bridge. And we called it bloodline because all our blood is red. And that's why we said red is a very, very positive and a very, very uh, nice color in the gray landscape of Johannesburg. And the reference here was straight on from a Merwe, the artist, uh, land artist. Um, I've got that picture in my boardroom. Um, and the simplicity, because the message is very simple. It's a very simple, straight, there's no fancy stuff. We wanted to reduce it. It's a very reductive approach. Um, personally, I like this bridge. Um, it's the color red. It's only the color red. And then the concrete at the bottom, we would have all these me messages would be imprinted. And there you can see some of the early concepts and the build-up of the bridge. You can see this red line is actually hovering above these two rubble heaps. That uh, that's the mounds, so that how uh, you enter. You can see that lab labyrinth approach when entering, and it should be planted. Um, can be planted just to make the journey better. And at night, that's it, just a red line, as simple as that. A constant red light to emphasize linearity. And here with just a few other, <coughs> uh, this is the bridge in um, the, by the architect engineer Robert Maillard in 1936. Just look at the simplicity and the <coughs> by the same person, I mean, just look at that, just two lines and um, how sparsely went, uh, used the concrete. And just obviously you all know the Norman Foster, Malau Viaduct. This is the bridge by Santiago, Santiago Calatrava. There's a lot of criticism against Santiago Calatrava because they say Santiago Calatrava, he, he, he disregards uh, context. Uh, he creates a, a piece of sculpture and the first city you can buy it, he will just do it for that city. So there's no synergy or no, um, so there's a lot of criticism these days, um, you know, that uh, Calatrava or the whole, his whole philosophy of designing. Because these days it's a bit, bit more, you have to look at the context, you have to look at the local environment, you have to look at stories, you have to look at, get some local clues. And, um, but obviously Calatrava is the bridge guy in the world. And that's the Bilbao Bridge, and also by Calatrava. And here were just a few other fun bridges, just to show the creativity of bridge design. Um, this is the bridge in uh, Portugal of Arab. You can see also President Studies we've used in, uh, this is um, Brisbane, Australia, President Studies we've used for the Nelmapius Bridge. And here with, and here with South African bridges, it's starting to get on South Africa. This is by Professor Glenn Mills for Sandral. Cable stainless, the Orange Farm Bridge by Burgertman, and that's it. Thank you very much.